Come on, church, let's give Jesus praise in the house today. Amen. Woo! Solid B plus. That's okay. We're going to get there by the end of service, I hope. Hey, we're so glad you're here. My name is Pastor John. I'm one of the staff members here at New Anthem Church. We're so blessed that you're a part of our church family this morning. And uh, man, God is doing so much in the life of our church. We're so excited to tell you about. Uh, and uh, But before we do that, we wanted to take a moment to give a very special uh, announcement, or at least a new, fresh announcement. Uh, and before I do that, I'm going to ask uh, Jason and Jessica to come on up on stage. Uh, let's give them a hand, huh? Um, where's Hananiah? She's uh, kids. Oh, of course. I forget. I forgot we had a children's ministry here. No, I'm great. That's awesome. Hey, uh, so as many of you know, uh, Jason was our first full-time hire here at New England Church, was a pastor of our West location, uh, and then pastor here at our central location when we merged both together when we got into this space. Uh, and uh, one of the announcements for today is that this is actually Jason and Jessica's last week with us here at New Anthem. Everyone take a moment. I know, yes, there was that same moment in first service. Uh, just take a beat, take a beat. Um, I am, I, I said this, I'm gonna say it the exact same way as I said it in first service. I am incredibly bummed out um, and uh, selfishly. I'm the kind of person that's like anyone that like I vibe with as part of our family. I'm like, let's just do this forever, right? And that's just not how life works. And that's just not the reality of life. And, and if that was how life works, Cece and I wouldn't let, have left the church we were at and went and launched uh, here at New Anthem uh, because we were at a great church, a thriving church, a healthy church, a growing church. Uh, and, uh, and yet God called us to something else and God called us to more. And so I like to say it this way. Uh, our church isn't for everyone in every season of their lives, right? And we have to be content in that space as leadership, uh, but also for you guys too. And so uh, uh, they are going to be moving on and uh, we're excited about that. We celebrate that because I have no idea, and I don't think they do either, have any idea of what God has in store for them. But here's what I do know. And we said this first service, this is something my pastor said to me when Cece and I were leaving to launch a church, that we'll all, you guys will always have a place here and always have a home here. And I know you'll be leaving out the back door. We're keeping the light on and you're always have a home here. You're always welcome here. Uh, we love you. We'll always be your church family. I think church is one of those unique things um, where uh, we can, we, we're unified with bonds just beyond just relational and having things in common because ultimately what we all share, that we're all knit together by this common thread, that there is something above every single one of us that unifies us named Jesus. And under that banner, uh, that's a bond that can never be broken. So we're grateful for that. So let me address uh, some things that, some of the things that maybe even just popped in your head. And that is, if they're leaving, something must be wrong. Um, now, I don't think there's anything wrong. Is there anything wrong? I mean, other than me, like, kicking your butt consistently at golf this summer, are you offended at anything that I or the church or the staff has done? Other than the golf comment, no. <laughs> I had a really good track record then <laughs> if I made it up until this point. What about you, Jay? Anything that I've done you know, other than taking your husband away from you to golf? Is there anything that like we did that any of these people... Yeah. I mean, that hurt a lot, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't changed. It's, it's going to keep happening. It's okay, though. No, but um, the, the, the first thing that a lot of us want to do anytime we, we hear transition, because none of us, I, I used to think that there are certain types of people that just don't take change well. None of us take change well. Amen? <laughs> like, none of us do. So the first thing that many of us want to go to is like, something's wrong. We need to get to the bottom of it. Like, what is it? Sometimes God just calls people other places. Sometimes God just leads people other places. And that's something that we have to celebrate. I'm only half, half excited for you. <laughs> You know, because like I want you guys to be a friend, but we know God has planned, God has a purpose, and we're excited to uh, to just champion uh, you on in that. Uh, I'm sure 
we'll, I mean, you, you, you live right down the road. I'm sure we're going to see each other. Uh, but uh, man, we're so, we're just excited for what God's going to do uh, in your lives. Uh, we want to bless you on your way out, just as we bless people when they come in. And so wherever you're at in the room, can you just extend a hand to the stage? We're going to just pray covering, protection, blessing, favor on their lives, on their future, and all that God has in store for them in their future ministry as well. So God, we just lift these two up to you. In fact, we lift their whole household up to you, God. I first just pray uh, for favor. None of us know what their future holds, and yet we commit ourselves to the one that holds our future in his hands. And so God, we, um, we just come before you, and we're just praying for just supernatural blessing, direction, God, um, for where you're leading them into, that they'd be able to step into this next season with confidence, uh, not hoping that you've gone ahead of them, not hoping you're going to lead them, knowing that you lead your children into abundant life. And so, God, I just pray for favor. Um, I pray for um, uh, peace as they continue to navigate the months ahead, God, that you would just give peace to their steps that would surpass all understanding. Bless their household, protect their marriage, strengthen them. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. amen. Come on, can we give a big hand for all their service, serving faithfully these last few years? We love you guys. Oh. It's a good day, amen? Because God made today. And God made you for the day, but it's a special Sunday because it's Legacy Sunday. And for those that have been a part of our church for any amount of time, you're probably familiar with that word, that phrase, and that season of the year. This is going to be another, like last week, slightly different message, not one that I normally preach. Some of you are a little bit nervous because you invited a friend and you're like, you got to hear the preaching. And then you were like, oh, it's, it, we're, we're talking about our, our year end offering. But I think it's going to excite you and encourage you as we all get on the same page about ultimately where God wants us and has us in this day with which we live. Um, God has a, his hand on this house, amen? God has a plan for this church, amen? And, and God is leading us into something. I want us to understand that what we're doing here um, is, a, is a movement, right? It's not just a, a, a service. We didn't launch a church because we like doing services or even because I like preaching, doing worship, or we like putting on events, but ultimately we felt called to start a movement, and that was actually God's plan A for the church of Jesus Christ. God's plan A for changing, transforming the world, and reaching people was the church. And so there's more to the story. There's more at play, and yet I believe there are certain levels with which God has called us, not every church, but us, New Anthem Church, our culture, who we are here, like we talked about last week, to be an exception. Maybe said it this way, an exceptional church. Now, what do I mean by that? I don't mean like, uh, you know, we're going to be the best church. Um, I, I want to build some context for that, that phrase that I mean. There's this principle inside of theology called the principle of exceptionalism, which is to say that our God is a God of exception. Amen? Some of you all say, said amen, and you don't actually know what that means, so I appreciate that. It means you're engaged and expectant. You're like, I'm sure I'm going to understand in the next five minutes. I hope so. Our God is one of exception, which is to say, our God establishes order, rules, natural law, and then according to the way that he sees fit, according to his purposes, in fact, the word of God is full of stories with which God gets involved, creator gets involved with his creation, and most of the times that he gets involved within scripture, it's to give exceptions to the rules and the natural order and laws that he put in place. Now, what do I mean by that? Because some of you are like, God doesn't break rules. Give me a second. Okay. Men don't go in to lion's dens and come out in one piece. And yet God allowed Daniel to be the exception. 
Men don't go into burning furnaces and come out not smelling like smoke. And yet for three Hebrew boys in the Old Testament, God allowed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be the exception. Bodies of water don't tend to part on their own. And yet God commanded the Red Sea to be the exception. Women in their, mind, in their 90s don't typically have babies. And yet, for Abraham and Sarai, God called them to be the exception. And if you, you didn't know this already, men don't typically get tortured, nailed to a cross, get placed in a tomb for three days later, and then three days later rise and get up and start preaching and, and bring salvation to entire civilization of people past, present, and future, covering the sins for all of mankind, for all of humanity, and yet Jesus will forever be our example of being the exception. And in the same way, churches in this day and age, if you didn't know, still the same, the statistic is still the same today that nine out of 10 new church plants fail. And churches that plant and then five months later have COVID hit, and then when they really, really need a building, they're about to get kicked out of a building in a really horrible real estate climate, find a building. And all of those things shouldn't have happened, and yet God called New Anthem Church to be the exception. And perhaps as we are the exception and God has set us apart for a very specific reason and a specific purpose, not because we're exceptional people, not because of our merit, not because we're special or unique, but God uses broken, imperfect people to do his good will and to do his good work. And so he allows us to be the exception to reach the world for him. Are you with me, church? Now, what does all this have to do with generosity and giving? Well, I, I think the answer might surprise you today. Um, I, I want to read this verse, and then we're going to pray, and we'll dive into the rest of today. This um, text in 2 Corinthians, as Paul is writing to the church of Corinth, he, he writes this, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Would you bow your heads with me this morning as we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, we are expectant for what you're going to do. As we take up our legacy offering, as we commission our legacy offering, God, we were reminded that not only have you been with us up until now, but the same God that has been with us up to this point wants to continue to lead us towards abundant life, towards greater ministry, towards people, families, and individuals reached for the sake of the gospel. And that's something to get excited and expectant about. So God, we give you our attention. We ask that you would speak to us in a powerful way through the proclamation of your word. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. amen. When it comes to generosity, many of us, we have different, um, I guess you could say, misconceptions. We can bring certain misconceptions to the table. Some of these brought about by our previous church experiences. I'll give you an example. I went to church every single Sunday for pretty much my entire life. And I think it was until I was about maybe 15 or 16, 17 years old, I thought that when I saw the tithe box in the church, and when I saw people putting money in after service, it's because the pastor just nailed it. It was like a tip <laughs> when you have a good waiter. You know what I'm saying? Did anyone else? Was that just me? Just Dang it. <laughs> I know some of y'all are lying in church right now. <laughs> some of y'all aren't lying. You just did that. They, like, that was actually pretty good. Like, that was just... <laughs> now, I, I thought that's what generosity was. We've had people in the last couple of years come up to me and say like, so this church is supported by the government, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And you don't want to go to the church that is. Um, amen? amen. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then others said, um, so this, this church is supported by 
like other churches, like other big churches. Like there were churches that like helped us launch and then like that they figured like pay our bills. Like like Kensington like pays all of our bills. We're like, not yet. <laughs> not yet they haven't. <laughs> Can someone make that call actually? <laughs> It'd be pretty cool. Um, our church exists because the members of the church trust the Lord and believe what the word of God says. The word of God says that it's more blessed to give than to receive. When we read the word of God for more than just words on a page or ancient text, or it, we said last week we, we preached the whole counsel of God, and so, so we, don't, uh, we, don't, we don't tend to, to say, well, well, this was like really old school, so we're not really going to preach about that, and then this is really for today, or this really feels good, or this kind of, and so we, we're going to preach the hard stuff, and we're going to preach the, we're going to preach the full counsel of God, and what the word of God says is that uh, our money is in a very intrinsic way connected to our heart. That's why the Bible says uh, it's actually easier to fit a camel through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, Jesus isn't saying that it's impossible for rich people to go to heaven. He's saying it can be difficult because money has this way of changing your perspective and it can make or break your heart. So how God set things up to work in his kingdom, the way he set things up to work, is that he said, I'm going to build something in to the way that you live your life and your regular earthly experience to make sure that your heart stays intact. Enter giving in the church. Now, I didn't say giving to a church because we don't give to a church. We give through a church. There's some new people here today like, this is a cult. Like, <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> the reason we, are, we remind ourselves of these things is because I wasn't reminded of these things, and I made it almost to college without understanding why you give it all. So we repeat these phrases, we have these things, we declare things over our lives, the best is yet to come. We give through a church. We are reminding ourselves so we don't, as a church, get too close to the forest to see the trees and just thinking, well, everyone kind of just gets it. Everyone understands what we're doing here. Everyone understands what church is about. This is what happens when churches become irrelevant. And they just kind of become about what they have going on rather than trying to figure out what God has called them uniquely in this day and age with which to do. And so we have to be reminded well because there's always, we have new people every single week, first time through the doors that need to understand what we're about. That some need to actually understand what the Bible says about generosity, what the Bible says about salvation, what the Bible actually says about their faith, what the Bible says about heaven, what the Bible actually says about hell, and not their misunderstanding or their incomplete theology they have, under, uh, have about understanding. It. Some people come through our doors and swore off Christianity simply because they were given and fed a false gospel. So this is why we continually remind ourselves. We remind ourselves, oh, that's right. I'm not giving to the church. I'm not giving to a pastor. Y'all know I've never touched a check that you guys have given. And all God's people said, amen. <laughs> I don't understand money at all, y'all. I, I don't understand it. I didn't grow up with it. I don't get it. <laughs> but we have people on our staff that do, by the grace of God. That's why we've made it this far. Right? And so we give, we give through a church. So we all have to face our own misconceptions. Some of us just have our own beliefs about what we feel like God is like and what he wants us to do with our money. But ultimately, the Bible doesn't say what we feel like it says. The Bible says what it says. So let's get on the same page today as we enter into the season of legacy, which I'm so excited about. For those of you that are new, legacy offering, is our annual offering that we take up. In fact, the building that we're sitting in right now is the result of our legacy offering that we actually expanded to be a building campaign. And there were faithful people that gave money that they had, some money that they didn't have 
all with the dream of what God could and will and is doing in and through this church. It was a faith exercise. We've been doing this every single year at this time, and we collect this offering through the month of December. But no single part of this message or any message from this church is about trying to prod you, push you, or manipulate you to give. We've never been about that. You notice we don't, you know, you ever been to those churches, they have those like weird bags that they like wave in front of your face? Like, you got some more? Hey, you know what I'm talking about? I just went to a church recently. This dude, I'm like, I don't even go here. I give to my church and I give online. You know what I mean? Like 80% of our church gives online. Do you know how awkward that would be? So many people that give, but they're like feel intimidated by the people that are looking at them like, oh man, I thought they were Christian. They just handed the bag by. It just becomes a game. Doesn't that sound awful? Anyone have that experience? Remember the gold plates? Maybe if it's gold, it looks really fancy. Like everyone will just start like emptying their pockets. I was like, this is the weirdest thing. If you can afford these gold plates, sell one of these and then I don't have to give my tithe. <laughs> This is therapeutic for me, you guys. Like, this is, you don't, under, I have so many, that's why we don't pass an offering plate. This isn't my idea about not manipulating people, though. This is what the Apostle Paul just, just wrote to us as he was talking to this church at Corinth. Each one of you must decide in your heart. We believe before you drove in the parking lot, you already decided if you were going to exercise generosity. Why do we need a purple felt bag in front of your face? decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. This is the word of God. For God loves a cheerful giver. It's got to be out of the joy of your heart. But it's a heart issue. Amen? It's got to be out of the joy of your heart, but it is. Don't get it twisted. It's a heart issue. It comes down to your heart, friends. New anthem does not want your money, but God does want your heart. We don't, we don't want your money. God does want your heart, though. And biblically, those are intrinsically connected. Those are intrinsically connected. Jesus addresses this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 in the ESV. It says this, No one can serve two masters. He will either hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. What are we talking about? It says this, You cannot serve both God and money. Which is to say, friends, your master will also be your motivator. That which masters you will also be that which motivates you. And I believe one of the reasons God set up a conduit with which we can funnel our generosity is because ultimately he wants him and him alone to be the motivation of our heart. It's all about you, God. When we give, we are reminding ourselves, not God, he, he's, he already knows. We're reminding ourselves that every single thing in our bank account, crypto account, and retirement account does not belong to us. Oh, this isn't my opinion. This isn't like a theory I'm working on. No, the word of God says that God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. This is figurative speech to say all of the currency known and unknown. The pirate ship uh, treasure chest that no one's discovered yet at the bottom of the Caribbean. It all belongs to God. Everything in your bank account, every, the check that came in, the, it all belongs to to God. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. And then this good God of heaven good, gives good gifts to his children, and, and he gives to whoever, whatever he decides, because he's God. Now, how does this make sense with regular tithes and offerings? Because when we give, the way God set things up to, things up to work in his economy, economy is to say, God, I'm going to give back a portion of every single thing that you put in my hand to remind myself that it's all yours. And this is why God blesses it. This is when God says, see if I don't bless, see if I don't care for every single need, see if I don't step in and cover every single one of your needs. If I don't fill 
the amount of lack, if I don't fill the void, if I don't bridge where you come up short. Test me in this. When we make the decision to not say, uh, I better give, because I haven't in a while. I'm feeling a little guilty because I haven't been the best version of myself lately. So I'm going to go to church. I'll give a little bit. Maybe I'll feel a little better. And as soon as I feel better, I'll go back to my money belonging to me. <laughs> Some of y'all were like, he's on to me. You know, like, he said, guys, I did that. Like, that was me. That was 100% me. I'm, I'm talking to the old me, okay? Like, don't, don't feel called out. I'm talking to the old John here, okay? And if it was me, I know every single, every single one of us have a propensity of looking at our resources and our money this way. But let me tell you what I've also learned and realized. I learned and realized the blessing of trusting God with my money, with my resource, in such a way where everything he puts in my hand, I'm like, God, it's all yours. Whatever you want to do with it. You want me to have a little? Great. You want me to have a lot? Great. Whatever, whatever you want, it all belongs to you. But see, that's just lip service. So, so I'm going to make sure a portion of every check that comes in goes back through the church to make sure my heart is only ever connected to the king of the universe. Amen? Amen. So every year we take up this offering. In years past, we've given to dozens of churches all over the country. We've been some main donors of some powerful churches. In fact, we were the main donor of, of a church that's one of the fastest growing churches downtown Detroit right now called Motor City Church. The pastor is one of my best friends in the universe. Some of y'all been there, uh, and uh, I'm a little salty about that because uh, I didn't know about that. No, I'm just kidding. You can go there as much as you want. Pastor's one of my best friends in the world, and they're doing an incredible job. Guys, they're busting at this. They just just hit 500 people not on a holiday like they were like 150 people this time last year like it's crazy what God is doing and the the building that they're just pray for them because they're they have an opportunity to get this building that's like it's insane but anyways we we were their main don't like they will tell you they wouldn't have been able to launch had it not been for the people of this church and now there's this unbelievable movement going on downtown that's ministering to the homeless downtown that's been on the news twice. It's going to be on the news a third time this Christmas. It's like it's crazy. God's favor. And what did we do? God, it's all yours. It's through our legacy offering. We've seen churches launched. We've rescued girls out of horribly abusive, forced marriages in Nairobi, in East Africa. We've done all of these things. I want to talk a little bit more about what we've done, but also what we're going to do. Last year's legacy offering, as I said, was a building campaign. So we don't have a big long list of missionaries that we were able to reach, although we were able to plant some churches because nearly every dime went right into this space that we are in now, that we've already, begin, have already begun to maximize. And I want to talk about some ways that we, we've maximized this building. But I wanna show you some pictures before we do that of what it looked like before, and before uh, some people in our church put some major sweat equity in. Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? Yeah, that was all Jed's fault there. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yep, yeah. Just incredible. And here's what's, <laughs> it's a horrible idea to give him one of those. Um, it was just the worst decision I ever made. Um, yeah, so what was cool about this is it wasn't just the resource. We couldn't have gotten here without people's financial resource that they sewed in. But also, as you can see, their sweat equity. Like, we didn't, like, hire a company. We were the company, right? And so um, everything that you see uh, was built by the members of this church. And, uh, man, just such a cool thing. Um, yeah, we can, go, we can go to the next slide. We've already started maximizing this building. Um, we launched something called The Mix, which is our young adults ministry. Uh, we're going to show you a video. This was of, of their kickoff night. And uh, they're reaching dozens of young adults, more than just doing a small group, but putting on events um, and reaching people. First service, I totally thought that was me preaching. 
I was like, you know how people think all black people look the same? I did that. Like, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> Anyways, it's not me. But, <laughs> but yeah, I'm sorry. So there's, welcome to New Anthem Church. So, but we've had launched this young adults ministry, and it's reaching people, and it's reaching a demographic that none of us know how to reach. And, it's, and, they're, and they're coming, and they're inviting people, and even showing up on Sunday. And what's crazy, and I shared this first service, we've had this weird influx that like God has given us favor with semi-pro athletes. It's crazy. We have like this group, we have a group of soccer players, we have some hockey players represented uh, here. It's crazy. They're bringing their hockey friends. I don't know what the I, I don't know why, but it's kind of cool. It makes me feel like a cool pastor. I don't know why they're coming. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's cool. It's pro, pro hockey players, friends with them. It's good. Um, anyways, our young adults ministry is reaching people. Um, we've been already putting on events to maximize our building. This, uh, this event was one that we did in the fall called, called Trunk or Treat. And um, here's what's cool. Um, there was over 400 people there. <laughs> and we had no clue what to expect. We didn't, we were anticipating, we were like, if we get 100 people, it'd be great. There was 400 people, most of which don't go to our church. Uh, and it's exciting to hear about 400 people and kids and, and all these families uh, come and experience our property. But I don't, I don't get excited about a bunch of, pe- a big crowd. I get excited about a big crowd hearing the gospel which is what they got to hear. And so Jed masterfully shared the gospel message to over 400 people, like I said, most of which had, weren't a part of our church. Some have already started to plug in and show up here on Sunday mornings. Friends, this is why we exist. This is what we're investing in. This is what we want to do more of. We want to do more events like Trunk and Tree. We already have plans like we got to blow this up because this it blew up by accident. Like we handed out a couple flyers like you should come and then 400 people came. I don't even know how they heard about it. But we're going to start pushing and marketing. We're realizing and we want to follow the wave of God's favor and, and double down on this event for next year. We want to see a bunch more families reached, have a way to plug them in to our church and plug them into community and give kids more than just candy but the gospel, are you with me? So uh, we did Trunk and Tree. Where else did our resource go last year? Um, one of the only other places it went uh, is an organization called ARC. We give a substantial amount on a monthly basis uh, to our church planting network. We're an ARC church, uh, which is our assessment. All of our training was through for CCNI. and I. Um, and ARC has just done an incredible job. They're up over a thousand churches all over the country that they've launched. Um, and let's see some of the metrics that your giving went to in this last year. 40 churches launched in 22 states, seven ARC global launches. This was just, by the way, this isn't even legacy. This is just the we- weekly giving. A portion of it goes to ARC every single month. Um, 13,518 total launch day attendances. This is just out of the new churches that were launched in the last less than a year. And then a thousand launch day, over a thousand total launch day salvations out of the new churches that your resources got to help launch. Um, 1,097 churches launched through ARC since 2000. And that's a network uh, that we love being a part of. We're, they're not absolutely not a perfect network, but we're super excited to be a part of them. They're reaching people. And what's cool is if you go to really any art church all over the country, it looks and feels very, very similar to ours, which is very, very cool. So if you're ever on vacation, just go to the ARC website and look up an art church in your area because they're in every state and, uh, and, and try to go to one because it, you'll find it, it's very, very similar, very similar feel. Um, very, they draw in very similar people with very similar hearts. So it's very, very cool. Um, so your resources are la- still launching churches, even though the majority of our giving went to um, our, this building, your we- weekly giving still is launching churches all over the country. So I want to change gears in just for a few moments before we pray over the offering and close things out. I, I want to talk about where we're going. What are some of the things that we want to do? Hopefully that some of us will get excited about. Uh, and I want to remind you, this is not a normal week. This is not a normal Sunday. We realize that. Uh, this isn't how the, the, the sermons normally go or the service normally goes. Uh, so come back next week. We're launching our Christmas series. It'll be great. But let's plug in for a couple more minutes. We, um, we take part in an event the last four years, over four years now, um, called the Turkey Distribution, uh, Thanksgiving Meal Distribution. And uh, you can see some videos of it here. And um, us, uh, we, we give meals to, to cars that, that pull up. Uh, historically, it's been at Total Sports over in Harrison, 
Township. We've given uh, hundreds and hundreds of meals out every single year. And one of the visions that's been on the heart of our team um, with this property is to move that event and find a way to do it here. <laughs> find a way to do it here. It's just, it's just ridiculous. Um, <laughs> because um, we have a property that's perfect for it. Um, also, a lot of the people that need these, when we used to do this, we used to do it at the Emerald Theater right downtown. So we used to have like a line of, of homeless and just people uh, in need that were just coming and picking up these meals. Um, and so a lot of the people that need it most uh, need to walk there. And so it needs to be in a place that's easier to walk to, uh, to than uh, being way over there in, in Harrison Township. So we're really hoping to do it here. The other thing that we're really planning on doing and, and excited about is giving people turkeys again because we weren't able to this last year we gave like coupons for turkeys and we're like we can't have signs out for free turkeys and not give people turkeys so we're gonna start really early we're gonna I think take on a lot more of the event our churches we normally partner with other churches that kind of run it um, but we're gonna take on a lot more of it and actually provide turkeys like full meals and then work really really hard rather than just to give it to anyone who drives up we're really gonna work hard to get the people that need those meals the most um, there to the to the event or get the food to them so we're super excited about that we were wanting resource to go to that and blow that event up as well um, we have lots of church plants coming specifically to this area but also all over the country there is does anyone know where k-pack michigan is i just so many people first service everyone was like oh yeah k-pack i'm like but no one's heard of Indian River. Like, I just, it doesn't make any sense. Cape Pack's like a third the size of Indian River. It's like, oh, I love me some Cape Pack. Listen, <laughs> no one knows where Cape Pack is, okay? But for whatever reason, there's a church planter planting there. I don't know. I've tried to, you know, talk him out of it. He's doing it. Um, and he needs help. And he's actually just went through his ARC assessment. So we're wanting to align with, uh, with him and him and his wife and, and get them plugged in as well, as well as some other churches uh, that we're looking to launch um, as well. Uh, what else we want to do with this year's legacy offering? As you can tell, there's still some building improvements uh, that we need to make. Uh, please notice there's no back wall in this auditorium. <laughs> and we probably should have one. Uh, and so uh, we want to up the security in our kids' area. There's a lot of things that we want to do like that. Um, there's really, really, really bad signage. Uh, and uh, we actually had someone who was at first service that was like, I drove by three times, but fortunately there was someone out there with a the blue arrow going like this. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have passed it three times. This was a real conversation like an hour and a half ago that I had with someone. And so we need better signage. There's people who's like, I drive by there every day. I had no idea there was a church there. I'm like, that's because the sign is behind a tree. So we're, we want to we wanna work on that. Um, and then uh, lastly, uh, you may have noticed, we never actually did a grand opening. We just scurried in and started doing services here because we had to. Uh, and God blessed it and God's grown it. And it's incredible to see the growth. And yet we have not really gotten the word out at all and let people know and done any kind of marketing, social media or anything uh, to let people know. And so uh, that's another thing that we want to do. Uh, and so that conversation Hannah had with you about, you know, some of you, if you can go to first service, we're going to have a much more serious talk about that <laughs> when we do our grand opening and, uh, and we release that marketing. So we're, we're super excited about that. Um, there is about a dozen other things that we're excited to do in this next year that would, to be honest with you, blow your mind, but that I cannot share yet uh, because some of them might not happen. So here's what will happen. I'll get excited. I'll share it. And then you're like, why didn't we ever do that? You lied to us. So rather than, <laughs> rather than I've learned my lesson, I'm just going to say there are so many things, great conversations we're having with some incredible leaders and some that are going to potentially be the biggest things in the life of our church. And I believe they're going to happen in the next year. And so, uh, Man, have faith with us in this season. Have faith with us. And be expectant for what God is going to do. Now, now what does all of this have to do with, with our, our, our generosity talk this morning? Ultimately, we have the opportunity in this season over the next four weeks to allow God to build our faith in a supernatural way. So, so I, I just want all of us, and in, in I think there is a, an envelope, a legacy envelope there on your seat. If you can grab that. Um, this isn't uh, our way of waving the, the felt bucket in front of you, I promise. Um, what this is, is an opportunity. Here's what we ask you to do. We don't, we don't manipulate or push or pressure people to give. 
all we ask, and we've only ever asked this. You can ask members that have been with us since the beginning, and we've been consistent with this ask. Just talk to God and ask him, Lord, what would you have me do? How would you have me engage and get involved and not give to a church, but through a church? What would you have me do? Now, here's what I would add to that. That if, if you've never exercised generosity, maybe you don't give to a church regularly, I would love you to have that conversation with the Lord first. I want you to have that conversation with the Lord first, just with your, just with your regular, consistent giving and generosity. Talk to the Lord about that first, and then have the conversation about your end. Now, why do I say that? Pastor John, we just said all these different things of how these resources are going to go to help people and build churches and, and, and change the world, and, and that's awesome. But if we can't consistently keep the lights on as a church, the church that started that initiative goes away. Are you with me? And by the way, there's been dozens and dozens of churches that actually had to close their doors because they weren't intentional about the way that they communicated their year-end giving. So everyone stopped the regular weekly giving, put it into all the stuff that they were able to do and change the world, so they were able to help a bunch of people, and then the church closed. And so I, I don't want that to be our story. That's why I say, if you're like, I don't, really, I don't really give to church, I want you to talk to the Lord about that. Because why? It's intrinsically connected to your heart. I want you to address that with the Lord first. And then once you've addressed that with the Lord, ask him, Lord, what would you have me do with this year-end giving opportunity? For some of us, it's going to be a one-time above and beyond. Some of you, you, you know what's coming every year, so you've already been saving up, which is awesome. Some of you are like, I already know. I've already prayed about it. I already know what I'm giving every single week. Some of you are like, I, I just, I, this, there's a thing I have to do, and I'm just going to give it in January. All of our online for Legacy will be available all the way through, through January. That's awesome. I, I don't, I'm not here to give direction for any of that. You already know the ways to give, online lobby, text to give. You already know the ways to do that. But I just want to make sure our hearts are right before the Lord, because if we have a house and a, and, and a church full of people that feel manipulated to be generous, I just feel like we're missing it. And, and, and although we may be able to bless people, where are our hearts at? So, so I want to repeat what I said. We don't want your money. God wants your heart. It's an interesting dichotomy because ultimately the generosity of the people of any church determine the speed and the level of which they're able to reach people and do ministry. It, it just, it's directly contingent on our level of generosity. We said the same thing with our building campaign. It's like our generosity determines the speed and the level of which we're able to do it. And the truth for us today is there are families that need a church like ours. There's wayward sons and daughters. There's single moms and single dads, broken homes, husbands and wives at the end of their rope that need hope, that need this church, that need some of the ministries that haven't been created yet and are going to be created out of this legacy offering. There's communities like churches downtown Detroit that need the generosity of our church through our legacy offering to help them launch so they can reach 500 people and be the fastest growing church downtown. There's, there's all of this need and yet it comes down to us. It comes down to our faith. So I want you over the next couple weeks to just allow God to grow your faith, to talk to him consistently about what he would have you do, about how he would have you get involved. Now, some of you, you would say, that's great, Pastor John, but I just, I'm thinking about it. I don't really know the exact amount to give. This is something I said last year, and I think I've said it the year before as well. Here's how I've tried to determine what the Lord wants me to give for that year. If it feels good, it's probably not the right number. Because a faith direction from God usually stings with our finances. Like, you want me to do what? Right? Isn't that faith? 
Isn't that what we have to trust the Lord for? It's like, really? That? Uh, right? Because many of us, it's like, well, we had this extra money. It just kind of came out of nowhere. Ain't no skin off my back. But is that sacrifice? Does that require any faith whatsoever? So ultimately, as we're considering, and again, this is what I just said, not so much in the Bible, but like I said, this is just what, I, what I've done every single year is to like, okay, what, what is the number, what, what is the point where it's like, oof, that's probably what it is. But again, I leave that to you and the Lord. I'm going to ask wherever you're at in the house, grab an envelope. You don't have to lift it up. You can just hold on to it. And um, I, I just want to commission this offering. Like I said, we collect it through the whole month of December. It's not a check that you have to write today. It's not something you have to get online and, and do today. We collect it all through the month of December. We're going to celebrate whatever number we raise uh, in January. And then we're going to celebrate and announce a bunch of stuff that we're going to start doing and, and moves we're going to start making. It's going to be incredible. So uh, with that envelope in your hand, I'm going to ask that you just bow your heads with me as we commission this to the Lord. Father God, I, I pray for every person in the room, um, God, that they're exercising faith right now. Um, some are, are nervous because <laughs> you've already spoken to them what they're supposed to do or sow or, or give, and, and it's, it's gonna be a big faith step. Some, God, you're gonna be speaking to give or to exercise generosity at a level they never have before. Some in the room, God, that there are those maybe even tuned in line, they've never given, and yet you're asking them to take the faith step to regularly, consistently give, not to a church, but through a church, to see the gospel go forth in power. So, God, with this year-end offering, we just commission it, we give it to you, we surrender it to you. Not a single bit of these dollars belongs to us, Belongs to it belongs to you. And we're, we want to steward these so well and to reach so many people and do all the things that you've called and positioned us to do and who you've called us to be. And so, God, God, I just ask that you would build the faith in the room, that this would be a season where we see you move supernaturally and that you would ultimately show us who you are through this offering. So, God, we don't know what the future holds for this offering, but we know you hold it in your hands. We ask that you bless everyone that's taking these steps. We ask that you bless the next handful of weeks as we collect, and all the impact that we're able to do with it would echo into eternity. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Come on, everybody said. Yeah. Amen. Come on, can we give Jesus praise one more time in the place today? Amen. Well, church family, we're so glad you're here. If you're a new guest with us, I want to remind you, this is we do this like once a year. You just aren't that lucky, and that's okay. But um, I hope you were blessed. I hope you were blessed today. Uh, Alyssa's going to be bringing an incredible word next week. You don't want to miss it. I know, yeah, we get it. She's your favorite. Just stop, okay? Um, <laughs> she's my favorite, too. But... We're, uh, we want to encourage you to come back for that as we start our Christmas series. It's going to be powerful. I got a special word brewing as well for Christmas Eve uh, that I think is going to really encourage your heart. So uh, be thinking about who you can invite to that as well. Um, church family, we love you. We pray for you every single week. Our prayer is always the same. It comes from the book of Numbers, and it is that the Lord would bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, turn his countenance towards you, be gracious to you, and give you peace. Why? Because the best is yet to come. See you next week.